determining the validity of websites. In the book Reading the Web, it says that the Internet has no system of checks and balances for providing any indication of appropriateness. What this means for us is that we are the ones who are responsible for determining if a website has accurate information or not. The website that we're going to use to examine this is the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus website. And to do our examination, we're going to use the real method, which is read the URL, examine the content, ask about the author and owner, and then look at the links. So, let's take a look at our website. This is the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus website. And you'll notice up at the top, right away on the URL, you see it's a .net. So it's not a trusted site like a .gov, a .edu, or a .k12. Now, those sites aren't necessarily perfect, but a .net means that we have to be even more careful because it's a personal page that any person or organization can purchase. Next, we're going to examine the content. The first page of the Pacific Northwest Tree Octopus page looks fairly good, but if you go to the fact, and I've already done that in a separate tab, you'll notice that one of the things it talks about is a Sasquatch. Any time that a Sasquatch is discussed on a page about tree octopuses, uh, I have to question the validity of such a website. Digging a little bit further, if I click on the Sightings tab, there are several pictures of tree octopuses. One of those pictures in particular looks very obviously to be a stuffed animal that's been placed in a tree. After examining some of the content, the next thing I'm going to do is ask about the author and owner. One of the ways to do this is to go to the website called Easy Who Is and enter the domain name, which I've done here. Then when you click Next, it'll bring you to a list of domains uh, of information about that domain. And one of the things you'll notice about this is that all of the information, the registrant, the administrator, the technical information, and the billing contact are all the same person, which means that this is probably a website that's owned by one individual person for his own purposes. So, after looking up the author, then we're going to take a look at some of the links. One of the things that happens on this page is every time you refresh it, this link right here changes. And if I click on this link right here, it brings me to a separate page that has the same URL as the first page, so it's from the same guy, and it's uh, asking for the independence of a made-up uh, country that's in the uh, northwestern United States. So, obviously, this site's a little bit questionable. Uh, in addition to that, uh, other refreshings of that will bring other information up at the top, uh, including one that has to do with aluminum foil deflector beanies, which block mind control rays from entering your head by using aluminum foil. Obviously a little suspicious. Now, to finish up my examination of links, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of this page, and on the bottom there's a bunch of links to other animals of interest. Each and every one of these animals is a fake animal website that's owned by some other person. So these aren't the same as the guy who does this website, but they're all fake animals, such as the saber-tooth salmon uh, and the mountain walrus and things like that. So these are obviously fake websites that are made by other people that this person has linked to. All right. Now, whether you are a teacher or a student, it is important that you are careful when you are looking up information on the Internet. In the case of the Northwest Pacific Tree Octopus website, since this is not an education or a government site, even extra care needs to be paid to the legitimacy of the website. On this website, there are many red flags that should tell a web searcher that this website is a fake. Now, in my math class, many of these steps are unnecessary in our evaluation of websites. My requirements for students are that the website should contain the same information I give in class. If the equations given online are different from mine, they are probably wrong. If a student does find a website that contains information that is different from what I have given in class, I ask them to evaluate the information to see if it matches what I have taught and is just presented in a different way. The one big thing that I did take from this website validity experiment was the need to be careful about what URL extensions my students use. In future assignments, I might specify a necessary URL extension that my students need to find, either .edu or .k12.